When my father was a child, he started to listening to rock and roll. And my grandparents went to him and said, that stuff will destroy your brain. When I was a child, everybody around me was very concerned about my excessive amount of gaming. And here I am talking to you about the very same thing that was supposed to ruin me. Well, it's needless to say that video games are one of the parenting challenges of today, maybe the biggest. And by average, in Finland, every child spends one or two hours per day for gameplay. And when something takes two hours of your day, it really becomes something that affects you, and it affects a lot. I don't say that in the future we will be spending life in a capsule and communicating only by a digital device. But what is certain is that more and more of our time awake, maybe even during the sleep, will be spent in a virtual digital interaction. And this brings us to the question, how we teach these skills for the 21st century citizen? And how a game entertainment game can be a game changer in this, in learning and teaching these skills. And one definition I have to make is that I'm talking about entertainment games, the ones that you can buy from a retail store. And why is that? I think that entertainment games, they have the broad story. The design process starts from coming up with good context, interesting, engaging context that people will, be, will dive in. And that context really works as the temple and the rooms of your mind's temple, where all the information is storage in a, in a continuum, and where you can actually remember stuff. And this is, it's funny that most of the educational games today forget this. So now if we take these two hours into school, and we start playing games at school, Will we be just playing or actually learning? Well, we have seen that kids are super goal-oriented when they are, they are in a game. The goals can be student-given or child-given, collaboratively uh, taken, or they can come from the structure, the learning structure of the school and how school works. So definitely, Kids will be, the teachers, all the teachers who have been working with us, they have been amazed how well a mainstream game, a video game, works in a classroom. And the, when it comes to communication, it's, it's always the challenge that how can we connect all the games and the stuff that people do on the free time to school. And now, kids don't make a difference where or when they talk about things. If, usually they talk about what interests them. And quite a lot of times, that's, time, that's, uh, that's a video game. So now, when they have the same conversation on a school cafeteria, or they have the conversation at home, playing maybe multiplayer game, if we can put some information into the game that the child can use when they play, then we will take one of the things that we teach into this, like the, in the like the flow of knowledge that the students and the kids are using every day, everywhere. So let's have a scenario. There is uh, kids that, are, that want to make in their favorite game, they want to make a palace. So what kind of palace do you want to make? Let's go to Google, Google some picture. Okay, this is super awesome. Let's make that. So now it's symmetrical. How can we create something and how, what can we use, what kind of tools we can use to create something symmetrical? Well, the teacher taught us how to make symmetrical things. We can take that information and use it when we play a game. And when we go deeper and deeper into communi communication skills, some of you might know this uh, character from the internet. We think the learning space, when there is a video game involved, as two spaces or two environments. One is the physical classroom where we are, and one is the virtual classroom where, where we look through the monitor. And now, when we, um, for example, 
when we teach skills, at the same time we teach something else, like group work. And so what kind of uh, skills we promote? Well, face-to-face -face communication, obviously, and uh, group work, and etc. Well, now, when we use the virtual environment, we can take the same routines, the same skills, and reinforce them in the virtual environment. And what kind of different skills would the teach, will the teacher need between these two contexts? Nothing different. They have the, all the, teach, the teaching knowledge is about the routines and how we can learn, how we can teach, and now just use the same routines and manners in the virtual environment. And the second big thing is, is that what happens to us nice people when we go online and, for example, comment post on YouTube and maybe newspaper. My dear business partner said to me that one, one out of four comments that he gets are positive. And the rest of them are just rubbish. They are awful. And one thing is griefing. It's like the cyberbullying that happens, unfortunately, every day, maybe almost every one. So, now, in sandbox game, open-ended sandbox game, griefing is possible. And a lot of teachers come to me, or a few teachers come to me, or have come to me and asked, how can I prevent griefing from happening? And I ask I'm asked them back, why would you want to stop griefing? Because griefing is now, the very problem online is now happening in your classroom, in front of your eyes. And when you take part, and actually take a stand, it will be the best teachable moment you will get for a 21st century digital citizen. And when something like that happens to your, in, in your favorite game, and you actually, you are told that, hey, stop that, you are doing something wrong in your environment that you're supposed to be the king of, well, it creates a meaning. And this meaning is the thing that you can use when you are trying to explain for example, piracy. Why piracy is wrong? Well, think about something like that happening to you, and now what did you feel when, you, when we were playing that game and somebody grieved you? So this come, takes us to a perspective change in teaching in general. When kids are so interested that they are about games, and now they are also very goal-oriented, uh, we, can just, we can just concentrate on creating the interest. And a great example of this was an Egyptian temple from Madrid who contacted us. And they wanted to teach where columns are, where hieroglyphs are in an Egyptian temple. And we wanted to say, and they wanted to be, that it to be very stru structured. And what we said to them, or I said to them, that, for example, from the technical perspective, making something so structural is is challenging. And also, if we just give them an Egyptian temple construction kit and they can make their own quirky temples, some of them will get interested, go to Wikipedia and learn the, all that we can teach them in seconds. Now, a lot of teachers want to get more out of their students and get them involved and get them to put their ideas onto the table, and etc. So now games, when they are so interesting, when, now it's a great time for the teacher to ask from the students, how, what can we teach with this game and how? You will definitely get a ton of answers. And this is your time to take in the student input and really change the power and balance of power in your classroom and make it more democratic. And in the end, it's just about opening the valve. And when, the next, when next time your kids are doing something extensively that you have mixed feelings about, it may be the next round of great ideas for the second generation. So take a close look to your youth. Thank you.